Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sasha. As Michael has have mentioned before, I am currently a junior developer at SP Digital. I've been working there for around three and a half months now. Uh, I'm a fresh grad, so before that I was a student at SUTD, and uh, before that I've only been uh, going through uh, internships and part-time jobs. So tonight I'll be sharing with you my experience with full request review as a junior dev in the past three and a half months. So everyone here, is everyone here familiar with what a pull request is? Can I have a show of hands? Who is familiar with the concept of a pull request? Oh, <laughs> okay. So a lot of people are familiar, but basically it's just a request to repository maintainers uh, to merge proposed changes by you. But so, so the Git concept works is that you pull the changes, hence the name pull request. Um, Okay, so pull request allows for collaboration. If you have heard of open source softwares, um, not everyone might have a right access to the repository. So you must uh, propose your changes through a pull request for it to be accepted uh, to the code base. It also provides checks and balances. So even though you have a right access, you might actually still have to uh, submit a pull request so that your peers, your colleagues, has to review your code just in case can be improved for better. Now this is the form of a pull request that you guys might be most familiar with. It is a GitHub pull request. Um, the, the title of this pull request is add install MongoDB role. It was submitted by somebody. Um, there is the description of what the PR does. Uh, usually each uh, repository have their own template of what it should provide when you are submitting a pull request. So please do read their contributing guidelines before submitting one. Um, you have your changes. In GitHub, you can view the, those changes inside the files change tab. Um, there's also a reviewer. And in this case, the pull request has been approved and it has been merged to the master branch. And then there is also another form of a pull request. Uh, this was taken from the Drupal issue, tr issue tracker. Uh, but it's essentially still the same. You have a problem or the motivation of submitting this pull request, and then you have a proposed resolution to this problem. You have a rem yeah, there, there's some remaining task. Um, the difference here is that instead of uh, in GitHub, you might push your changes to the respective feature branch or bug fix branch. Well, branch, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> uh, here you submit patches. So patch is also another thing you can generate uh, in Git, which is basically just hunks of changes. You know those things in files change that have the plus, plus, minus, minus. It shows you what you add and what you uh, remove from the code. Those are essentially what patches are. Um, it says here that the pull request needs review. Uh, and yeah, but this is just another form of pull request. And now, and the role of pull request in our developer journey. I think as long as you are still writing code, pull request will be like an integral part of your journey. I think at first when we start writing code, our interaction with pull request will be that we are the ones submitting the pull request. Uh, as a junior de developer, especially, we are expected to write codes, right? Usually our description is like to be able to write um, some, some stuff in what language, uh, in certain styles. So that's what our first interaction with pull request will be. Uh, with the rise of the open source initiatives and also events such as Hacktoberfest, I see there's uh, someone wearing the Hacktoberfest t-shirt here. <laughs> yeah, the, the interaction of the pull request has been uh, facilitated. So a lot more people have interacted with it now. But then we expect as, as you grow and get more experience, as a developer that you will then be given the responsibility of reviewing a pull request. And uh, I, I thought at first that as long as you are still a junior developer, you won't be given this responsibility of reviewing a pull request because it has been consistent with my previous experience. In my first internship, uh, I was only tasked to write a code. So whenever I want uh, this code to be merged, I will re then request for a senior developer to review my code. and. Only senior developers essentially reviews intern's code. This was also true when I worked for Red Hat, even though the team was uh, quite small at the time. Yeah, I have I was never been I have never been asked to, to review a pull request prior to, to, to this 
in part of the job lah. Yeah. But then in SP, bam, I was asked to do a pull request uh, one month in. <laughs> and it was very scary to me at first because I know that pull request review is important. Because I think as a reviewer, we act some kind of a guard that is guarding a gate to the code base. You are the one who decides whether this piece of code can get merged into the code base or not. Now, if you let something bad and you keep letting bad things come in, you will definitely decrease the code quality of your code base and it might lead to a lot of future problems. You might uh, let a bug go through and yeah, disaster. <laughs> And then uh, the reason I, why, why I was scared also was because I don't feel qualified to review a pull, pull request. Uh, prior to this uh, assignment at SP, I have only been coding uh, in Ruby on Rails, uh, in Ruby with Ruby on Rails, uh, and also in school I learned Python and Java. And then at SP, uh, we mostly use GoLang for our development, so I had to learn this language uh, on the job. But then one month in, then I, I, I had to review a pull request written in Golang in a language that I had just learned. So I totally didn't feel qualified to do it. And then I'm, I'm also not confident in my ability to communicate. Because when you are reviewing, you are essentially communicating with the submitter about your feedback, uh, what could have been done better. Uh, yeah, and basically it's, it's just a, a way for you to communicate. Okay, but then I realized as I, as I uh, was doing my PR, then in a PR, you can do the obvious stuff, which is you see whether it solves what it's trying to solve. For example, if you have a story tracker, then a PR might take one story and then see if it implements the features that is requir uh, required in the story. Uh, you can also, of course, check that there's no bug uh, as, a, as, a, as a junior developer, I think you can still try to read and find red flags if, if there is any, uh, even though you might not um, understand the whole thing fully. Uh, you can also check adherence to guidelines. Usually when you are working in teams, you m must have agreed on some, some, some guidelines to adhere to. For example, in, in the project that I'm currently working on, we have a guideline of having code coverage of at least 70%. So in the pull request, you can see whether this pull request fulfills that criteria. Does it decrease the code coverage? Is it now below 70%? If it's now below 70%, then you can request for the submitter to uh, do more thorough testing to fulfill the guideline. And then there is also the not so obvious stuff that I have discovered. That pull request can actually be a medium to do knowledge transfer because you actually are reading the whole changes that your colleague has made. So to do a thorough pull request, you might even read their code line by line. You try to understand what they are trying to do. Um, you then will understand what is what, how, how the code works under the hood, which is good if you plan to work on that project uh, in a, for a long time because then you will know how each part uh, works and then when you have to work on it in the future, you already have a context of how uh, it works. And then you also understand the reasoning of the other party because when you write code, I think you write code based on assumptions. You might make assumptions that, oh, I assume A, therefore I write this code in a certain style. But then your assumption might be different from that of your colleague. So when you are reviewing, you might, you might think, hey, why does my colleague write this in this style or in this way? Uh, and then what, what you should do as a reviewer when you face that kind of question in your head is that you ask the person who submitted a pull request uh, the why. Maybe uh, you, 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 you put your train of, train of thought there, like I thought that this is uh, like A, but then why, why did you do it in, in, a, in a certain style? Yeah. And then the other thing is also you check for I think this is the role that us as junior developer can play the most in because a senior developer might have written some fancy one-liner that is like very not readable, maybe to them it's, it's readable, but then to us, it's, 
then suddenly you don't you, you can't read the code then but, but if you don't if you can't read the code then is it really readable enough then uh, will it be easy for other people to get onboarded to your project uh, you can request for the submitter to uh, write it in a different way but most importantly I think the lesson that I learned is that no one expects you to be perfect so this was what my senior developer uh, told me when I told him that I was nervous about giving this, whether I should approve this PR or not, uh, is it really uh, within my uh, rights to actually do it. Then he told me that no one expects you to be perfect. It's fine if you can't do everything, you can't catch every bug. It's fine even if you actually accidentally let a bug in, it's not your fault. In fact, it's nobody's fault. It's not even the submitter's fault. I mean, shit happens, right? Uh, what was more important is that um, you then find the bug and then try to fix it. All right. Okay, so these are also things that I've learned. Um, in a pull request, you can, aside from doing all those things that I have mentioned before, you can also note things that are interesting to you. Uh, this is what the senior developer has commented in one of our projects. He said, oh, I haven't seen this package used before. Then he uh, recommended another uh, package. Maybe this is another interesting package. You can, you can try to look at it, but you don't need to use it here. You can also ask for clarifications. Um, yeah, I found, I, found that I found something that is not really consistent with what the other packages has been doing, and so I asked why. It is so, and turns out it was because of the library API that we were using. Uh, the third thing that I learned is that you should not procrastinate on reviewing your PR because they tend to pile up. Uh, it, it slows down your development. Uh, also, if, if you feel that uh, it's hard to review a PR, right? I think it's better to ask yourself, why, why is it hard to review this PR? Is it because it's too big? Then maybe because it's, if it's too big to you, then maybe you can request the submitter to actually split it up into several uh, small PR. Is it because the requirement is unclear? Then maybe it's time to ask why you're trying to solve uh, or maybe ask the product manager about those stuff. Or it might, might be because uh, what you don't understand what the PR is trying to do. And then you can also ask questions to clarify. Uh, another thing that I've seen people do in the PR also, you can actually refer the PR to someone who might have more context. Uh, as I said, it's fine if you don't understand everything. If you think that there's someone else that is more qualified to review this PR, for example, this is a senior developer, all right? So he said that he's not very familiar with the stubbing style for this testing. So I can't tell if it's written correctly or not. So he, he would suggest maybe get another person more familiar with it to take a look too. So it's fine to do that too. And last but not least, don't be afraid, but don't be a jerk either. So don't be afraid to leave your comments and give, leave suggestions. Um, after all, you shouldn't take any PR comments personally. It's not a personal attack on you. It's never, unless, unless someone is clearly trying to rip off your code. Yeah, but don't be a jerk either. Don't try to destroy someone's work. Everybody makes mistakes. So just be nice about it. Uh, leave constructive suggestions. And yeah, that's all. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? All right.